you thieving bastards. Here we go. I'm doing it. I'm actually fucking doing it. Getting in touch, dude. Getting in touch with my true self. My true emotions. The three critical criteria to being a fucking true psychopath. There's three things. You guys want to know what they are? Okay. Right. See, okay, this is a little bit more festive. Okay. Animal mutilation is one. For what it's worth, you. Fascination with fire, for what it's worth. Dude, what was my dentist? Say, or any dentist, dude, any dentist. What is their safe word? You know what I mean? Like somebody was like, saying some fucking dumb shit. I heard some fucking safe word. And I'm like, what kind of fucking little trick ass toy? Like, what's the dentist say for it when he was jamming fucking needles into my roof of my fucking mouth? You know what I mean? And squeezing fucking hot liquid in there. You know what I mean? Like, say for it. Animal mutilation. Okay. Fascination with fire. Are you ready for number three? It just it just keeps getting better. You're like what? Animal mutilation? Fire? Oh my god! Are you ready? Wait for it. You guessed it, dude. Bedwetting. Nobody asked, Jill. Hey, guess what, dude? If my haters were an oatmeal, they'd be peaches and dick, dude. You want, dude, oh, you want to shoot me right now. You want to shoot me right now, but you can't, dude. What? What, dude? So I got that going for me. Okay, dude. If you had to explain a fart to an alien, how would you do it, dude? How would you do it? Tell me how you explain. How would you explain blue to a blind person? A blind person, you're like, it's blue. You know, and a blind person's like, what's blue? Describe to me red. Like, how would you do that, dude? How in the actual fuck would you do that? How in the actual fuck would you describe a fart to an alien? Right? If you had to do it. Just saying. These are like the deep fucking topics. This is the shit that I think about. Dude. I, I would guess I would start by telling you like we eat food as fuel, plants, flesh. And our body separates like the, you know, like the carbohydrate particles from the fat particles and it fucking moves this energy over here and it separates the fucking water to for different purposes and 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 the air that's in there gets separated and it ends up leaking out of this thing called a butthole and depending on like there's various circumstances like what does it sound like well it makes a noise that's how you know and there's a bad smell but it's like, what kind of noise does it make? Well, that depends on various factors, like the uh, uh, butt crack depth, uh, skin uh, moisture level, right? Like if it's wet, like a wet fart is gonna be totally different than a fucking dry fart, right? Which, by the way, if you guys are ever in a crowded space 
and you want to make everybody laugh, I'm going to show you the secret to a super realistic, funny fucking fart. And this is the secret. You grab your fucking shirt and you muffle, you muffle your fucking voice like this. See how it sounds like it's coming through fucking clothing. I don't know if you could get that. Right? Like that. And, and then a... See? Can you see the difference? Like, get that on a good audio. Hey, shut the lights off. Turn the lights down low. <clears throat> Put on your headphones. You surround sound. Okay? And judge my fake fart, dude. Okay? You know, like, the ninja gloves? Have you guys seen ninja gloves? These? It just attaches by one finger right there. So you have your full fingy usage. But... Ninja gloves, dude. It keeps your hands warm on the motorcycle, right? And just for, like, Bujikan Jiu-Jitsu, fucking ninja gloves, dude. They're the shit. Love them, dude. Right? So anyway, you have the... Okay? And if you muffle it... Right? Totally real thing. People be like, oh... And look, so, because we're talking about like, well, what does a fart sound like? Well, there's varying degrees, right? Wet skin, the dampness, the moisture level of the skin, if it's really dry, it's going to sound different. Like those ones we were just doing right there, that's like a really dry mummy fart, <laughs> right? How about a wet fart? I have to like... I have to like cut my cheeks like this. So that your lips could flap. You cannot say lips flap with a straight face, dude. Okay. Yeah, so you have the wet one. You know what I mean? Like this is serious culture. That's the word I'm looking for. Culture, dude. Well, actually, you guys, we're going to get to some real serious shit. I'm going to go in deep, dude, on and into my feelings and like some fucking memories and things that I've been going through and noticing, getting clean, because I'm down to less than half, okay, of my regular dosage from my prescribed medication, okay? opioid base that we're cutting out of our life. And I am feeling, I'm coming, I am coming back to life, dude. My body, my feelings, I can feel things. I really, I'm, I'm getting in touch and I'm feeling pain, dude. I can, you know, that, that, that fucking tingly feeling, you know, like when you're getting your fucking heart broken or ripped out of your chest. You know what I mean? Hey, I lost a wife, right? I'll, I have a kid that I'm raising that lost a mother, Right? So there's heartache there, dude. There's things you have to deal with. You know, I've, I've, I lost some animals. You know what I mean? My main fucking breeder, dude. The one that started it for, him, for me all. Right? That I just, that just randomly showed up, dude. When I moved here three or four years ago. And she got fucking killed by a pit bull. You know what I mean? Because I didn't get up and answer the fucking door quick enough like there's like a lot of fucking suppressed emotions that I've been like getting back into touch with dude now that I'm my feeling and my body is coming back alive and I'm asking myself why why do you medicate and suppress these feelings and having my son has really given me tremendous insight into my childhood and my experience and my relationship with my parents. I have a father I've never even met, okay? Never even met. I got in contact with him. He contacted me a couple of years ago. And I'll, I'll tell you that story too. That's another tremendous fucking heartbreaking disappointment. Strangest fucking roller coaster ride ever, dude. But, oh yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get all into this, dude. I want to tell you about this fucking 
drainage, dude, at the Kroger store, the Food for Less. There was a drainage, uh, uh, like a, a sewer fucking drainage hole grate in the produce department. And it smells like fucking caca, dude. Like rotten spinach. Like I know because like I've done this with breeding beta fish. Like you use rotting vegetables to make microscopic organisms that the baby beta fry fish eat. So like I know because I've, I've rotted like some of these plants and vegetables. And I know which ones. Like spinach will smell like caca shit, dude. And fucking... So like I... I okay, it took me a while. But I finally figured out that that's what it is. But I used to like fucking... I'd go and be going through the store and I would fucking blame everybody, dude. Before I realized and remembered like, oh, oh yeah, it's this. Like there was this little old man, dude. Just like the littlest, cutest little old man with this little cute bag of vegetables. And he's just waddling along, shuffling along, you know what I mean? Because he's so fucking old. And I'm like, ew, you fucking dirty old man. It's probably you. You smell like fucking caca. Ugh. Can't even, probably too old to even wipe your fucking own ass. Gross, dude. You know what I mean? And then like he waddles away and you're, and then like some other lady, you're like, oh, okay, it wasn't him. Oh, this bitch, dude. You know what I mean? Like, oh, little Miss Piss over here. Forgot to wipe her fucking ass, you dirty bitch, dude. And you know what I mean? And it's like, over here, and ha only imagine what the fuck these people are thinking about me. Like, clearly, dude. Clearly. The fucking shit smell is coming from this dirty motherfucker over here. Mr. Kaka Queef himself. That was your mistletoe. Yeah. I blame everybody until I actually am walking past the grate. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, remember, like, the last time you were here, dude, grocery shopping, and the fucking time before that, and the time before that, and the fucking fermenting spinach on the, you know, feeding the beta fish fry, like, remember, smart guy, dude? I have, like, zero short-term, dude. <laughs> The doctor tells me, I'm going to give you three words. I want you to tell them back to me the best you can. He's like, light bulb, bicycle, uh, car. He's like, what was the first word? I'm like, I, I don't know. She's like, oh. we'll chuckle. Okay, well, don't you really pay attention? She's like, I'm mean, light bulb, but same fucking words, right? And I'm like, I, I got nothing, dude. So. Getting in touch with my feelings. I was a type of kid, dude, that was punished for expressing myself. I was not allowed to express myself. I was not... I remember wanting to play music and learn how to play music. And, like, I wanted these musical instruments. So bad, dude. And I just... I had no way to get them. And my mom was fuck, really strange. She has this strange fucking trip, dude, where she thinks that expressing yourself is weird and that you're going to bring negative or any kind of attention to yourself. Just any kind of attention is unwanted. This is somebody that still doesn't have a Facebook account. You know what I mean? Like it just has no clue about anything. And that's the other thing. Like she had called one time. She asked what I was doing. And I told her, and she says, well, I don't even know what that is. Interrupted me in the middle of the thing, and I was really proud of it. You know what I mean? Well, I don't even know what that is. Like, like, just save your breath, I don't even know what that is. And it just brought back memories. Like, like, first of all, not even memories. I'm thinking about, like, well, Joe, do you get overwhelmed and think about your, your son and dealing with him? I'm like, okay, well, think about it. When was the last time he told you something really cool that you had no fucking clue what the fuck it was. And I was like, well, I know exactly. Like, just the other day, he was telling me about something cool he did in this game, the video game Among Us, that's really popular right now. It's those little guys with the fucking, uh, the single uh, diving mask on, and they just have, like, one-piece jumpsuits. They're just little stubby figures. But anyway, that's Among Us. It's a game. I had no clue what it was. And I didn't say to him, 
I don't even know what that is. I was just like, oh, he's telling me something that he's really proud of. And I like pretend to know what it is and be fucking interested. And then actually like, well, what is that? Like ask, it's not gonna kill you to ask. ask. What is, and he starts, now we're interacting, we're communicating, right? And I didn't have any of that really. In fact, it was negative. It was a beat down. Anything you ask or do anything, it was just completely overwhelming, like God. How dare you ask me anything? This is somebody that's like probably has limited IQ, limited faculties, maybe some uh, substance abuse issues, and is completely overwhelmed by, you know, what I could imagine is a overly intelligent child, curious and overindulgent. So, you know, I think that's where a lot of my wanting to suppress emotions come from because I, I've had that fucking drilled into me since day one. And just imagine, dude, you're an artist on the inside and you're growing and experiencing the world and somebody's telling you you can't express yourself, you can't, you know. I used to get punished. I remember that... Like, I remember one time I, I cut the line in my eyebrow, right? Like, I cut lines in my hair. That's the one thing I'm bummed about growing my hair out is I can't cut lines in my hair anymore. Like, that's fucking cool, dude. And I remember when that shit literally came out. And I got, like, punished, dude. I would get punished for doing that kind of shit. And it's like, it's nothing bad. There's nothing, you know what I mean? And I look at, like, really healthy kids that are really, like, prosperous and healthy and they were like, they're, you know what I mean? Like you'd have green hair one day, like your parents let you do cool things. Not dangerous shit, out of the question. I could think of some hard nose that a lot of my friends got. But they were allowed to express themselves. It's an important thing, dude, for kids. It's important, man, because I'm telling you, if you suppress that, your kids are going to want to suppress their emotions, dude. And these are powerful things that we have. That are f We're powerful, dude, our minds. And some people just can't deal with it, dude. And, and when you can't deal with it and you suppress other people and you want to dim other people's lights around you, it's fucking horrible, dude. It's horrible. It's heinous. And I'm just like, I'm so proud that I don't do that to my son. Just in thinking back, like about the Among Us thing, like, do I do that? What was the last thing? I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, wow, dude, I was proud as a, as a dad, dude, not to be a piece of fucking shit like my parents. I hate to say that, but it's true, dude, because I like, I have to like deal with these feelings and this fucking shit, dude, and it's not fun or comfortable, dude, and it all could have been avoided if you just were like a decent fucking human being instead of, it's all about me, 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 and you know what I mean? Like, how dare you ask? Like, ah, oh, it's the fucking choice you made. Like, when you brought kids into this world, like, they I say that, dude. Kids are like a drug. They're the same thing as drugs. When people look at you like, oh, Mike, you're on drugs. It's like, no, I'm a single fucking parent taking care of a kid, which is the same thing as being on drugs. A kid is like drugs. It takes all your money, takes all your time, takes all your attention. Okay, you're going to put everything, you're going to put it first before everything else. You're going to even go without your personal appearance, your, fuck, your own clothing, your own shit. Like, dude, there's sometimes like, you know what I mean? The other day, I only had a couple of dollars on me and we were at the fucking uh, 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 fast food place. And it's like, I got him the shit and gave him the shit and had just a little fucking thing because that's what the fuck you do for your kids. It's what you should do. It's how you should want to be. And you know what I mean? Like, that that's not how it was, dude. Me growing up was a lot of fucking selfishness. You know what I mean? And my father, check this out. I So I reconnected with this fucking asshole. Randomly, listen to this. This was a sign from God, dude. There was, it was raining the one fucking time in the millennium that it rains in Southern California, San Diego. And I'm walking down the street and there's a fucking envelope on the ground, face down. We couldn't even read it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I pick it up, dude, and it wasn't even like that close to my house. And it was addressed to me. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? What the actual fuck? And it was a name that I recognized with my biological father's name. And 
I, that was weird, dude. I almost missed that shit by that much. And so I reconnect with this guy and it's come to find out he just, he wasn't a good person. He was very isolated, very lonely. He had like a, his son is like an accomplished person. I don't know if he graduated college or whatever, but he has like a very extensive military career and he's like a really clean cut, good person. That also won't have anything to do with me, just based off of judgment on looks and, and whatever. But you didn't reach out to me and then reject me. There, There's a difference there. You just stay the fuck away. You know what I mean? I can respect that. But this motherfucker, because he wasn't getting along with the other son, got abandoned and shut out, I guess went looking to replace him with the kid that he abandoned all these years later, reach out to me and, you know, hey, I'm, I don't hold any grudges or anything. I don't see who the fuck this man is. I got questions. And it was like, as soon as he's seen, like, well, wait a minute. Like, you don't have, like, the only, like, the vehicle I had at the time was a 77 F-250. It was like, wait, what? Like, that's all you got? And, like, well, what the fuck's going on? It was like, well, I explained, you know, a couple of the fucking problems I had. And, you know, there was some arrest. This was, like, right, this was before marijuana was legal in California for sure, okay? And fucking, I did have some legal issues, dude. That caused me a loss of some fucking material objects and what was holding me back, dude, in life. And that, I guess, scared him or put him off or just it wasn't what he... I think what he was hoping for was that I was just like fucking rolling, dude, like a contractor or a successful person and have this family and we go, oh my God, it's lost grandpa so-and-so and bring him in and it'd be like a fuck you to the other kid. That, that he's not talking to now because, you know, he expressed to me that he hadn't talked to so-and-so in two years. And so as I just put it all together, like, oh, so you're just using me to make, to replace him. And, and then because I'm not like successful or anything, you know what I mean? Like you rejected me and then it became like, yeah, like a rejection to completely. And I was like, is there something I did wrong? Or like, what, like, like, and it was just like, no, I just, I'm sorry. I think maybe I fucked up, don't worry, don't come out here. I, if, if you show up, I won't fucking have you. And you know what I mean? Like just probably best not to call and we just go our separate way. And that was like, whoa, that was like, whoa, dude. I'm gonna tell you the truth. That was like, whoa, okay? After 40 years of wondering who the fuck this person was, finally meeting them, this was a couple of years ago, right before I went to Slap City actually. So it was like four or five years ago. And then absolutely rejected me and told me do not have contact. Like just, just forget it, dude. And he's like, and they are kind of like upper echelon people, dude, that are like, like, oh, whoa, whoa. You know what I mean? And it's hurtful, dude, because why the fuck did you come and find me? You should've just left me the fuck alone. You know what I mean? And these are all just things, man, that I gotta like deal with and, 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 and wow, dude. And just, and I thank God that, you know, curses are generational, man. And I, I, it makes me immediately look at my relationship with my son and I see like, oh, it's not like that with him. I'm actually like this. And I make sure that I do a lot of decisions that are contrary to what my parents did because they weren't good, man, and and they're and they're still not good. My mom still. I think she's an alcoholic, dude, and I think she gets depressed, and or she gets angry, and she looks to start fights with people, and you know, uh, I'm the only one that'll answer the fucking phone, or you know what I mean, like, or you know, or the first sucker you found in your your rota deck, of 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 fucking people to go through, and you know, it's it sucks, man. It sucks and it brings back a lot of painful memories, but I think it's important to go into those murky waters, man, because that's what we find out who the fuck we are, dude. And when you find out who you are, you get an inkling into why we maybe do some of the things we do. It's very helpful. It's very helpful in, I mean, it doesn't like, turn me away from those behaviors, but it sure makes them a lot less appealing because I see why they're going on and what the fuck so, and, and it's not appealing to me. It's not appealing to me from to run 
from these emotions. It's, it's actually like I'm embracing them right now. And I'm happy because I'm able to see what the fuck's going on. God's given me the discernment and the, and, and the, uh, it's not wisdom. What do they call it? Um, understanding. Understanding, dude. To be able to look at something and understand from A to Z and everything in between what the fuck is going on. And God's given me understanding. It was one of the gifts, I think, that I was given early, early on in life because I have a very high IQ. And I remember looking at things as a young student, the teacher would be doing a math problem or something on the board and she'd have it all written out and I could just see it and I understood immediately just by looking at it and I could see it and, my, and I, I see the whole thing da, 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 working out and that's it. I understand. And I was like, man, I'm really glad that I understand. I think I have a gift. And, you know, it proved to be so. I didn't apply it. Unfortunately, I wasn't interested in a lot of, uh, you know, basic, um, you know what I'm saying, subjects. You know, like math and I get, you realize that those things have an importance in life. And more than anything, it's proving to people that you can follow instructions and understand things. And that's how we move forward. Here's another inkling that I had. I learned from making mistakes. If you just take a video game, for instance, you start playing a video game like Super Mario Brothers. And you don't jump, you're going along and you don't jump over the guy. Well, the next time you're going, you die. When you come, you regenerate, you're going, you know, jump over the guy. Because you already made that mistake, so now you know. And that's how it is. A video game is just, you have already played it and you know what to do. That's how you get on and you're like, boop, 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 jump, duck, jump, duck, over, over, under, over, duck, 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 down here, up there. Like, just like nothing, right? Like, Without even losing a life, like one life. Like, look, I went through the whole fucking game with one life because you know it. You've made all the mistakes, right? You know, I was thinking of Border Patrol. It seems like they get some of the dumbest fucking people, some of the clueless, dumbest people that, like, they don't understand what they're looking for, the nature, why they're asking these questions. And you could tell the savvy guys, the smart guys, because they understand. And then all the generic questions that they tell you to ask are out the window and they're asking their own shit because they can just tell. They know what they're looking for. But that's like two out of fucking ten. The other eight out of ten are fucking retarded. And I started thinking about it. I said, well, you only get this job because you never made a mistake. You have a clean record from A to Z to present moment. Clean. You have never made a mistake. Right? So how the fuck do you learn anything in life if you've never made any mistakes, especially from a criminal or a smuggling underworld mentality? How in the actual fuck, if you've never made any criminal mistakes, would you understand the criminal intent or mindset? You know what I mean? Because another... A senator, a smart-ass senator, said, well, I'm sure they could just get a crackhead to do the police's job. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? A crackhead probably would do just as good or a better job. For one thing, the war on drugs is over. So all the half-fucking TikTok fucking bullshit, Mickey Mouse fucking Donald Duck crap ain't going on. Okay, 90% of your arrests are not happening. Now it's violence, robberies, domestic disputes, altercations, mental illness, like actual crime. And I watch that kind of shit happen in the morning border rush hour traffic when people are ready to kill each other, dude. And you know what? I watch the homeless people going through the fucking cars and making small talk and jokes and distracting people that are about to kill each other. And why? Because, you know, they're hoping to get a fucking cut, a 50 cents or a buck or whatever out of it. You know what I mean? Hey, calm down, man. Or, you know, a cigarette or something. 
but just as their nature, dude, they, and because of them, nobody's made more mistakes than a crackhead. That's what their life is, is a series of mistakes. They know how to negotiate people that are fucking irate. They know how to get out of dangerous situations where their life is in jeopardy. And that's all that you're doing. Two motorists, dude, at the border, they're about to kill each other. And you get in between those people, you have to be fucking fearless and know how to negotiate death. To be like, I watch it every day, dude. I watch it. And it is. It's the crackheads. They're going out and making the peace. Plus, you get some crackheads that are tough to whip your ass. Like, it's not that far-fetched when the motherfucker said that shit. Like, like he was being a smart-ass for a joke. But it's not that far-fetched. And then here's the other thing. If you just replaced every other cop with a crackhead, first of all, it'd bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots, the us and the them, the community and the fucking police. Like, that would bridge the gap. You good cop, bad cop. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, that is a good system. You have a regular fucking straight edge Joe and a fucking crackhead as a partner. And that motherfucker right there would cut your salary and payroll in fucking half. Because the crackhead would probably do it for fucking a small amount of crack. It sounds way out, dude. Just like I'm sure... In Amsterdam, when some, but the first person was like, we should just make all fucking drugs legal. Wait, no, hold on a minute. We'll make all drugs legal. And we were like, dude, you're fucking crazy. But, I mean, it worked for them. There's some way out philosophies at work. But I just think, I had another point to what I was saying. What I was saying before about, oh, putting your, your life in jeopardy or going out into the community. There was a reason I was bringing up the crackheads because there was something else. What the fuck was I talking about, man? God, I lost my train of thought. Time to go, 32 minutes, dude. If you sat through this, I fucking love you forever, dude. I hope you enjoyed. Stay fucking golden, dude. Showers.